Good morning, Victory Vision Christian Church, all you sons of God, holy, blameless, and unaccusable in God's sight. Today's talk is don't blame God. Have you ever been there? You ever blame God for things that have happened? We do a lot of blaming because the law that is in our members, and that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this one right here, um, that Adam put us under a system that we could not keep and like God said to him, Adam, the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. And he said, you can eat off of any other tree because he was born to live, created to live, him and Eve, under this tree, the tree of life, the law of life. Two trees, two laws. This is the law of sin and death. It's also the Mosaic law. It's also the Ten Commandments. And it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That law, you, when you are born, is in your members because of what Adam did. Jesus put us back under the law of life because he, was, he, became, he became a man. He left his deity power in heaven, and he operated as a man under this law, what Adam was supposed to do. So he says, or he could not have said, and he did, as I am, so are you on this earth. The same things I do, you shall do only greater. And uh, if Jesus, that means he gave us everything, everything. He didn't hold anything back. He considers us sons. It says that we in Psalms are, um, the angels are lower than us. They are spirits and are servants, but we are higher than angels. Remember that. You're made in God's image and likeness. And that is a great treasure. But you don't find that out till you get born again. But up until that time, and even after, that's why sometimes Christianity gets bad name, because people don't operate under the, tree of the now, under the tree of life, the law of life. They're still under that law, cleaning it up and fixing it up, which is called religion. And there's no power in their life. One of the things they do is just what Adam did. He blamed God for the woman that he gave him. And that's what we do. We blame our husbands, our children, our jobs, our, the way, the, our upbringing, however it was, good, bad, or indifferent. And he keeps you in that cycle of blaming so you cannot receive the blessings. And it's called carnality. So Pastor John's going to come now to tell you what that means and how to get out of that because it's important. Good morning, dear. Good morning, sweetie. Good morning to you too. Pastor John Rock and Pastor Nancy Morat From Victory's Vision. And right That's here right. is our website. Go there, we have PayPal. If these um, uh, teachings are blessing you, growing you up spiritually, please give, give where you are fed. And um, we have a couple books we'll show you at the end that you can send for. We have over a hundred and some teachings on YouTube that'll train and equip you to be an overcomer in this life. Fivefold ministry is supposed to train you and equip you to be triumphant in this life. Will you get knocked down? Sure. <laughs> but you'll get back up and you won't blame God for it after Amen. Pastor John's teaching, right? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your word working in us, with us, through us, for us. I ask that you open the ears and eyes and hearts of those that are listening right now and those that listen to this teaching let them understand what it is let them not blame you for the calamity in their life but let them should see that you're the one that will create the solutions in their life I amen in jesus name we pray amen let me borrow the little speaker here to I'm going to go back. okay enjoy well welcome again Glad to hear you, hear from you, glad to see you, hear from you. What am I saying? I'm glad you're hearing from me. Hallelujah. Welcome to Victory's Vision Christian Church. We use these glasses for our logo. God told me a number of years back, uh, probably about 30 some years back, that John, you got to see the cross and see the blood instead of looking at yourself, and then you will have the victory vision of your life. So that's what we did. Today we want to talk about don't blame God. Don't blame God. Look at this poor gal. She's got all these demonic sources yelling, screaming at her, condemning her. And she says, why, God? What did I do? She's looking at herself, and she's blaming God. 
She's blaming God for the calamity in her life. God's leading me into that. God's leading to me, me into that. That's not true. That's not scriptural for a crea the new creation. Many people and many Christians blame God for their problems. Let me say that again. Many people and many Christians blame God for their problems. Why? Wrong knowledge of the gospel. You know, Pastor Nancy and I, when we first got married, we had a, a baby that lived for three weeks. And she had a heart defect and she died. I blame myself. And I didn't understand if God had, was involved in his death or, or what was going on. I didn't know. But now I know. It's the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. And that's what we want to talk about. Who was the first person based on Scripture? Who was it? The very first person based on Scripture to blame God for their problem. Well, it was this guy called Adam. Adam, God came looking for Adam after they ate of the fruit of the tree. It changed their knowledge. It changed their perspective on life. It was a standard now that they were under. Life in a tree they had, following right or wrong according to the natural realm. So what happened to Adam right away? He got, saw that he was naked. Well, he was naked before. Both Adam and Eve were naked before. And they tried to fix it by covering themselves up with fig leaves. Fig leaves. That's all through the Bible. Fig leaves represent you trying to take care of the problem and the situation. And that wasn't good enough. It's not enough. And so they saw they were naked, so they began to hide. Because they heard God, the voice of God, coming in the garden. And so what happened to them? God says, Adam, where are you? Well, God knew where Adam was. He wanted to say that to Adam to show Adam where he was and what he was doing now. He moved from the life of life into death, really, and condemnation and guilt and fear. He moved into that. So what happened to Adam? God is saying, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I was hiding. And God says, why were you hiding? And Adam says, because I was naked. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I told you not to eat of? And here's what Adam did. The first blame. He blamed first Eve. He said it was that woman, that woman that you, God, sent me and gave me. It was that woman. He blamed Eve and then he blamed God. Mm -hmm. Adam blamed Eve, then he blamed God for giving Eve to him. Why did that change? What happened? Genesis 3.12 says in the Common English Bible, The man said, The woman you gave me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate. It was that woman. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. It was that woman you gave me. He was trying to transfer the guilt and condemnation now he was under to Eve and to God. Take the blame. Many Christians, they don't blame God. Many Christians that don't blame God for their problems, they will say when you confront them, God's not your problem. Don't blame God, I will tell them. And you know what their answer usually is? Well, God will allow it. God will allow it. Yeah, God will allow what we allow. Because God has given mankind authority or dominion over this earth. Read Genesis 1.26. What does it say? God said to mankind, let them have dominion. What does dominion mean? God made Adam and Eve the gods of this world to bring everything into subjection mm -hmm. to the way God wants it, to keep it right and keep it good and keep it in order. But you know what? They didn't. They gave that authority that they had over to the enemy by doing what he wanted them to do. They believed the enemy's word more than God's word. Mm -hmm. How about this guy named Job? Look at this. This is what happened. Boils all over his body. Job didn't blame God. He didn't know what to think. But his friends blamed God. Oh, Job. You did something wrong, so God is judging you. God has done something this to you. If you think that way, you need to get a little bit more educated in the Scripture. Here was Job's problem, and most people, it blows my mind, where people, Christians, they don't see the value of their faith. Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. What is all things? 
Hmm? It's positive things and it's negative things. If you're believing in the circumstances and you're believing the worst, you're believing the fear, what are you going to get? Hmm? Life and death are in the power of your tongue and your tongue will say what the picture in your head is looking at. Think about that. Job 3, chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. He was worried about his children. His children got killed. He was fearful over his children. They got killed. He was fearful over his body. And what happened? He got boils. A lot of people will say, well, the devil, uh, God gave the devil permission to go after Job. No. The devil, point, or God pointed out that Job was already under the devil's power by having faith in the devil. Negative faith in the fear. Are you doing that? Are you fearful? It's time to stop and start looking to God. You know, when you're fearful, you're looking at a, a situation that may be created by who knows where. It's not the end result of your life. You can change your vision. Change your vision. Put on the victory's vision. Take your eyes off yourself. Right now, take your eyes off your situation. Look to God. If you're looking at the situation and in fear, you're hopeless. Hopeless means you can't expect good. Hope means to expect good all the time. If you're a Christian, you should expect good all the time. The price has been paid for you for punishment. Jesus was punished for all of us. If we accepted that punishment, we're free from that. We've been judged already. We come to the door of the cross and we open that door and we walk right in into freedom, into liberty. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Think about that. What does that mean, huh? Poor old Job. After he went through all that he went through, he began to see the grace of God. He began to see the grace of God and God restored everything in his life. If that's what you need, you need to change your vision. Put on the victory's vision glasses and see you're dead to that realm. You're dead to fear. You're dead to condemnation. You're dead to that and alive in the spiritual realm to Christ Almighty, to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in your life. How and why do problems, where do they come from? How and why do problems come? How do they come and why do they come? Number one, this is Matthew 13, 19, about the sower sows the word. Jesus talked about this parable. He says, if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand anything. It's one of the greatest parables. It's a lesson. A parable is a lesson. And why is it such a great lesson? Because he's trying to teach us what happens when we either take the word into our heart or we let it go. Or if we don't have a strong enough uh, root in the God, the God kind of love. Listen to this, Matthew 13, 19. No understanding. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, which is the love of God, which is the message of the gospel. This is he who is, who's received seed by the wayside, Matthew 13, 19. What does that mean? Hmm? What does it mean? Too many Christians, they just got fire insurance, and that's where they stay with their fire insurance. They don't do anything else. They just talk about their fire insurance, but God wants you to grow into more and understand more. Another one, why do we have problems and where do they come from? How do they come? Some have no root when persecution and affliction comes for the word. Persecution and affliction comes for the word, not just to attack you, but to steal the word out of your heart. Well, how does that happen? And they have no real root in themselves and so endure for a little while, I'm standing, Lord, but you're not there. Where, where are you, God? What's going on? And you're putting your faith in that fear again. You're ignoring what God said. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I've given you hope. I've given you hope. Hope does not disappoint. My hope does not disappoint. They have no root in themselves. They have endured for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the persecution and affliction is arising and coming to steal your word, to steal the love of God away from you. The root is deep into the love of God. 
What happens when you put on those Victory's Vision glasses? You see that your faults and mistakes were on the cross on Calvary and not on you. You died when Jesus died. That whole life is gone. It's done with. You've been born again of the Spirit. You're a brand new creation in Christ according to God, according to God's image of you. When God sees you, he sees Christ in you, the hope of glory. And what does he see in you? That you're holy, blameless, unaccusable. Holy, blameless, and unaccusable. It's in Colossians. Look it up. Oh, Pastor John, I don't feel holy, blameless, and unaccusable. I got all this regrets in my life, and I got all this condemnation, and I got a lot of sin in my life. See there? No education. You don't understand the gospel, and you got some so-called preacher that's going to preach that sin consciousness to you. And repent, repent, repent. Is your life full of repenting? Are you done repenting? Real repenting is change your mind, change your way of thinking, change your, your life. How do you change it? You put on the Victory's Vision glasses. And what do you see? That you died at Calvary. You died there. And then you're a brand new creation in Christ. You're in the kingdom. You got to think different. You got to see different. You got to believe different. You got to talk different. Mm -hmm. They have no root in themselves, so they endure for a little while. When trouble or persecution arises, for the word's sake, they immediately are offended, they become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and they fall away. I don't want nothing to do with that God stuff because the more revelation I get, the more attacks I get. Yeah, I know a few people that have said that. So they run away from God instead of running to God. Mm -hmm. The root is, a, is, you're like a tree. A young tree has little roots. A mature tree has big roots that go down and take the, the moisture that is in the ground and produces leaves and produces all kinds of things. And then what happens? Huh? You get built up. You get encouraged. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What was it that caused Adam to blame Eve and God? Think about this. What was that very thing that made Adam accuse Eve and accuse God? It was a new knowledge. The knowledge from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is right and this is wrong. That's the standard now in the natural realm that they put themselves under. A new standard. This is right and this is wrong according to my works, according to how I live, according to what I do. Mm -hmm. A new knowledge that created your conscience. And that conscience is a voice of the law of that tree. It's a conscience spoke judgment to Adam. It condemned him. Adam, you are naked. Adam and Eve, you're both naked. You got to do something. You got to fix it. You, you, you have to fix it. You, you, you have to fix it. You, you, you have to do something. Is that what you're hearing? Then you don't understand the gospel. You're died. You, you are dead to you. I am. You know, Peter as a disciple... Jesus made this statement. He says that he was going to be tortured. He was going to die. On, and he had to do it. And Peter says, if everybody leaves you, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. And then Jesus said to him, Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat. How could Satan do that? Well, by Peter saying, I will never leave you. I, he's depending on his own ability, not on God. Let the weak say they are strong. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. What does that mean? You got to trust the word in you and you in the word. You look to God, you look to him at all times. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll make your path straight. He'll make them straight. Adam wanted to transfer. Listen to me here. A guilty conscience has torment. Adam was tormented. Eve was tormented. Adam wanted to transfer that judgment to someone else, which he did by blaming the woman, Eve, and blaming God for giving him that woman. Hmm? You married? We've all done that with our spouses. It's your fault. I don't want to be judged. It's your fault. You're the one that messed it all up. And an argument starts. Throwing condemnation and judgment back and forth. Seeing who will take it. Mm -hmm. Not good. A person 
will never stop with blame until that person achieves an understanding of what the gospel can do. Let me say that again to you. A person will never stop with blaming themselves and blaming others and blaming God until that person achieves an understanding of what the gospel can do. What, the, what can the gospel do? John 19.30, the gospel removes guilt and removes it at the cross. Let me say that again. The gospel removes guilt and removes it at the cross. Romans 8, what does it say? There is now therefore no condemnation. Not there is there now. No, there is now therefore no, 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 no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Which one are you walking under, huh? Well, you don't understand, Pastor John. I missed it so bad. I missed God. And so God won't hear me. He won't answer him. And I can't hear him. Oh, what's going on? You need to get some understanding. You need to go to our website and learn how you can listen to more teachings. That's right. More teachings. It'll raise you up in the gospel. It'll show you what born again means. It'll show you what it means to be a new creation. It'll show you all kind of things. It's the voice of God in His Word. Mm -hmm. The gospel puts us on God's good list. Let me say that again. The gospel, when you understand it and you walk in it, it'll put you on God's good list and on God's team and into God's favor. You'll become one spirit with the Lord. You'll be led by the Holy Spirit. He'll talk to you. He'll lead you and guide you. He'll lead you and guide you when you don't even know what you're getting into. And it's all good. Well, Pastor John, I think, I think the Holy Spirit led me into all kind of trouble to try to perfect me so I'll stand and so I'll have faith through that stuff. No, 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 no. You're blaming God. It says in James, God does not test or tempt anybody with evil. He does not. Well, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And if your preacher's preaching that, change the channel. Mm -hmm. John 10.10. This is, to me, this is one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. Out of the Amplified. The thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that I may steal, kill, and destroy. Huh? Oh, you heard that sermon too. Not correct. The thief is the devil. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I, Jesus, came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance in abundance to the full till it's overflowing God wants the best for you are you sure pastor John how about this Ephesians 2 4 through 6 but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love where which he loved us he's rich in mercy and he has great love for us great love what is great love? Well, some of us can't even see it, and we call ourselves Christians because you don't understand the gospel. You need to see that when he died, you died. To that old man condemnation, to that old tree law, you're dead to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When Jesus said it, you're dead to it. When he said, it is finished, it is that tree, and it is finished because he paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loves us even when we were dead in trespasses. That's sin. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Sit with Jesus. Sit with the Father. That's how God sees you. Don't blame God for your problems. It's not God, it's the devil. It's the devil. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. The Bible says in James chapter 1, 16 and 17, do not err, do not err, do not err. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Sickness, a good and perfect gift? Crippling, cancer, hmm, COVID? Is that a good and perfect gift? Huh? How about poverty? Is that a good and perfect gift? 
It's the enemy trying to steal with you and wants your faith to you to confess it. We're always in poverty. We're always sick. I never, I always get the flu. I'm going to get this COVID. I've had four shots to try to vaccinate myself and it isn't working. I've had COVID two times. I'm probably going to even get, what am I, shut up. <laughs> right? Right. Amen. How about this one? Do not err <clears throat> every good and perfect gift is from above. And this is the other part of this verse. And comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness and no shadow. Oh, it's a great mystery that God has taken your children and killed them. Oh, it's a great mystery. We can never understand God needed somebody up in heaven. It's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy because we lack knowledge. We need to grow in that knowledge. You know, it's a, life is a battle. Life is a battle. And a lot of times we've all gotten knocked down, beat up, and dragged through the streets of shame and condemnation and guilt. It's time that we stand up straight. To be righteous means to remain in an upright, fixed position. After having done all, it says in Ephesians, stand, stand firm in the gospel message that he who knew no sin became sin, that you are, you may be and are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. Wake up. It's time for your crying to stop and start looking at the victory that you have. Wake up. Come on. You're looking at the, at the worst condition and you believe it. Hebrews 10.1. The law is a shadow. This is a shadow. It's not the full truth. It's a shadow. God wants us to understand what redemption is. If we don't, then we see and understand things through the law. If you can't see redemption, you will understand things through the law, which is in the shadow of the truth, not the truth. You won't understand. You'll be in confusion. You know, the whole world is really in confusion and in condemnation because of Adam and Eve, what they did. We've all inherited it. We all have a conscience that says, this is right and this is wrong and you better do what is right because if you don't, you're going to be condemned. And when you get condemned, we don't realize our faith is working against us. Our faith is cursing us. Our faith on the inside is power on the inside. Jesus said, if you have mustard seed of faith, you can move a mountain. But what you're doing is you're taking that mountain and putting it on your head and crushing yourself and crushing yourself and crushing yourself. Why? Why? You're using your faith against yourself to condemn yourself. It's not your fault. Jesus paid the price for all your faults, all your iniquities, all your weaknesses, all your sins. He paid it in full. What you're doing when you get condemned and stay condemned is you're saying, Jesus was not enough. Mm-hmm. Know your enemies. Modus operandi. Do you ever watch any cop shows? Modus operandi. What is that? The mode of operation. M.O. What's his M.O.? Why is he doing the things that he's doing? Why? There's a reason. Knowing your enemies. Modus operandi or M.O. By rightly dividing the word. God is good. The devil is bad. God is good. The devil is bad. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. I'm telling you, you'll never have the victory till you make that decision. The devil's bad and God is good, and I'm found after good. What is the thief's modus operandi? What is the thief, the devil's MO? It's to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. What is the modus operandi of Jesus? Hmm? To give life and to give it abundantly. To give life and to give it abundantly. Jesus said in Mark 3, 22 and 26, a house divided cannot stand. Are you a house divided? What's going on with you? Huh? You halfway in the gospel and halfway in the flesh, halfway in the gospel, and look it over here, you're confused. A double-minded man, woman, is unstable in all their ways. All of them. The purpose of a name Pay attention to me real close. The purpose of a name is to identify someone or something. When something has a name, it's supposed to describe who they are, what they are, their character, their personality. Satan, the thief. Names used to describe the enemy. 
the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2.2. 2. The thief, John 10.10. The accuser, Revelation 12.10. The adversary, 1 Peter 5.8. Beelzebub, the lord of the flies, Matthew 12.24. The god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The murderer, John 8.44. The ruler of darkness, Ephesians 6.12. The tempter, Matthew 4.3. The wicked one, Matthew 13, 19. The father of lies, John 8, 44. The binder, Luke 13, 16. Hmm? See all those? Nothing but darkness, nothing but death. What about Jesus? Do you see any murder in here? Do you see any, the God of this world? You're not of this world. We're of the kingdom of God. He's the king of the kingdom of God. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Where do you fit in? Huh? The purpose of a name is to identify someone or something. Names used to describe Jesus. Wonderful counselor, Isaiah 9, 6. Advocate, he's your advocate. He's your lawyer. He's going to court of heaven for you and saying, that person's not guilty because I took the punishment for that person. Apostle of our profession. He wants you to confess what is right and good and according to the word. Hebrews 3, 1. Author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. He's the one that has made your faith. He's the word. He's the one that's going to strengthen your faith, establish you strong in that faith by showing you who he is. He's the bread of life, John 6, 32. He's the captain of our salvation, Hebrews 2, 2, 8, 2, 10. He's the deliverer, Romans eleven twenty six. 26. Deliverer, if I have a problem, I need a deliverer to get me out of that problem, and he's the one that's going to do it for you. When you look at the word, the Word is what holds everything in this planet and in this universe in order. And you need order in your life, you go to the Word. You start confessing the Word. You start mirroring what the Word says about you and about your circumstances and situation. I can do all things through Christ. I'm more than a conqueror. Um, I'm not poor. I'm not in poverty. All my needs are met according to His glorious riches by Christ Jesus. That's my confession, huh? He's God. Isaiah 43 40, verse 3, in John 20, 28. He's the good shepherd, John 10, 11. He's life itself, John 14, 6. He's our Passover for punishment. He's our Passover. You know, in the Old Testament, when they had a Passover, the, the angel of death came by, and if there was blood on the doorpost, and they ate the lamb, the blood of that lamb, that's the Passover. The death angel passed over them. You want him to pass over you? I do. He's the liberator, Luke 4, 18, the liberator. You, you see any murderer in here, Any that God is the tempter or God is causing you problems? Wake up there, buddy. It's time for you to wake up and see God is not your problem. So don't blame God for those problems. God's not doing this stuff to you. God's not putting junk on you. It's ignorance and it's lack of understanding of what the gospel has done for you. You need to wake up to being righteousness of God in Christ. You need to see what happened to you at the cross. You have a new life. Start walking in it. God wants all to understand that he is the solution to all of life's problems and not the problem. Let me say that again. Are you paying attention? God wants all to understand that he is the solution to all of life's problems and not the problem. Mm -hmm. Solution, not problem. God and the devil are not partners in developing your humanity. There's a lot of Christians that believe that, especially out of Job. Well, God said the devil on him so Job would learn. God has got me under this, in this valley so I would learn. Well, guess what? Are you learning? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of, lack of knowledge. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge of the gospel, that there's been a great exchange. You gave your old stinking life up, and you took on his beautiful, sweet-smelling fragrance of a life, and you need to walk in him, who he is and what he is, and what you are. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. After the image of him that created him. <gasps> I have a new image. That's right. Put him on. Start walking in him. Too much junk thinking goes on. Too much. In the body of Christ. There's too many preachers that are preaching junk thinking. Repent, 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 repent. 
When are you going to come to the end of that? When are you ever going to really change your mind and change your thinking and change your walking and change your into putting on the new image? When? Huh? It's time. Understand redemption. Understand redemption. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives. The Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Mm -hmm. Luke 9.56. What does all that mean? Well, Pastor John, what about in the Old Testament where God punished people and, and all that other stuff? They were under the law. They were in fear. They were in rebellion. All kind of things were happening. But there were, uh, uh, there were some that were delivered. How about the guy named Enoch? He walked with God and was not. How about uh, Elijah went up in a whirlwind? Hmm? What does that mean? They went to be with God. Huh? They didn't face death. They went to be with God. And what else? Don't be condemned. Don't walk in condemnation. Victory's vision. That's what you need. Pastor Nancy, come on up. I think I'm preaching up a storm, huh? Oh, man. Hello, everyone that's tuning in and those that will listen later on YouTube. Excellent, excellent. Listen to it again and again because you want to get this down in your spirit, man, so he can bring it up to your mind, bring it up to your heart and your mouth so you may live in it. This is so good. It is excellent, dear. Excellent. So we want to pray for you. We hope you had a great holiday and there's holidays coming up. Try not to stress out. Try not to compare it to other holidays, other parts of your life that were maybe happy or sad. Try to just focus on the Lord and his, and his goodness. And his unconditional love. That in working in you, you want to constantly, and some of it will be a fight. That's why it's called the fight of faith. But you will win. You and the Lord will win. Um, we're going to pray now for any of you who have any kind of uh, thing coming against you like illness. I want to caution you not to go into fear with this new variant. Constantly... I think the world is headed toward believing either the word of God or not, because God's word won't change, where everything is changing mm -hmm. continuously and creating fear. Because if the enemy's got you in fear, he's got you. And you don't want to do that because the Lord says you don't have a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So you want to keep that sound mind, you want to keep your focus, you're believing, you're receiving, and you're speaking on the word. Go if, ahead. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord Amen. and Savior, right now, repeat after me. Say, dear God, dear I, God need your help. I need your help. I want to be saved. Yes. I believe what Pastor John has been saying, Amen. that if I only, only receive that Jesus died for me, I can be born again of the Spirit. I can be a new creation. So I receive that right now. I confess it. In Jesus' name, I believe that Jesus was raised from the dead for me. I believe that Jesus paid the price for all my faults and all my mistakes. And I thank you, Father, in Amen. Jesus' name. You are now my Father, and I'm your child. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you give me understanding. You show me the unconditional love of God like I've never seen it before. You give me wisdom, the God kind of knowledge, the God kind of wisdom. Show me, Holy yes. Spirit, and lead me and guide me. Take me by the hand and walk me through the things that you want me to see and understand of the Word of God. Not through troubles, not through troubles, but through peace and joy. That's what's all about the Holy Spirit. And that's God's calling in your life, peace and joy. He's going to show you the plans and purposes he has for you. Plans of hope and of good, not bad, not destruction. It's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God will show you how to have power over that. Father, I pray right now, and Pastor Nancy and I agree, and your word says we're two or more agree on touching anything, it shall be given it. It's written, and if it's written, it's forever settled in heaven. So we believe right now, Father, that everyone that is listening to this message, Holy Spirit, touch them, heal them, mm -hmm. renew their strength, renew their mind to be stayed on the message of the cross of Jesus Christ, the message of the love of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So you may have life and not perish. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. 
if there's someone out there that has neck problems, your neck is just hurting you real bad, and you're getting concerned about it because it seems like nothing you do is fixing it. We receive health and wholeness. Start walking around your house, confessing the word of God. Start thanking the Lord for your healing. He purchased it at Calvary many, year, many thousands of years ago. And celebrate healing. Start confessing it. Kick, resist the devil. He will flee from you. He is the source of illness and sickness. Also, Through condemnation. Yes. Also, a blood issue. You're concerned about something to do with your blood. We receive health and wholeness for your blood. Totally. You And we plead the blood of Jesus over you. Amen. And all those that are watching. Amen. And you also stand up and said, the blood of Jesus is working for me. Um, next week, we're going to do communion. So be prepared and um, join in with us. And Because we're two or more gather as touching anything. He's there in the midst, and they can bring a thousand to flight. So we will be doing that next week and maybe up until Christmas. So um, God bless you. We want to tell you about our two books, Take It First for Health and Emergency Faith. And we're going to have another one here pretty soon. Um, we want to encourage you $20 or more to send for those books. Keep Emergency Faith if you're a it shows you how to stand by on the Word of God. It gives you five points. What Moses and the children of Israel learned so they could cross over the Red Sea yes. on dry land. God gave them this. So if they can do it, you could do it too. You can cross over your problems to the victory in your life. Because they were in the Old Testament and they were unsaved. You have a much better covenant in Jesus Christ. So emergency faith, please send for that. And take it first for health is great knowledge on about illness and how to stay healed and also if the enemy clobbers you how to get up don't just lay there and take it so we want to encourage you to send for those or just give us an offering and please go to youtube and listen to those teachings they are there for you to train and equip you we want to um, wish you a really good week have a great blessed week in the lord if you put in the word daily you will and you want to close Amen. in prayer? Thank you, Father, for this word today. I ask that everyone that has heard and listened to this and does listen to this, that you confirm this is you talking through us, through me, to encourage them, to build them up strong in their faith. Thank you for it, Father. I pray that their faith fail not, but grow stronger and stronger every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.